Hormone replacement therapy with estrogen, with or without progesterone, is an excellent treatment for the majority of postmenopausal women, whether they have postmenopausal symptoms or not. After menopause, there is a sharp decline in estrogen, which is associated with bone loss, increased fat gain, reduced lean muscle mass, and accelerated muscle wasting. Hormone replacement therapy with estrogen has demonstrated benefits in reducing age-related bone loss. It reduces hair loss, estrogen reduces muscle loss, and estrogen replacement therapy increases muscle strength. In addition, estrogen uh, helps maintain dermal thickness, which reduces facial wrinkling and improves cosmetic appearance. The majority of women, about 87%, will not get breast cancer and do not have a personal history of breast cancer. For these postmenopausal women, I highly recommend hormone replacement therapy with estrogen. However, not all women are good candidates for, good, uh, for hormone replacement therapy, especially women with uh, genetic predisposition of breast cancer, such as BRCA1 and 2, TP53, and CHECK2 genes. For these patients, non-hormonal replacement therapy is preferred for bone maintenance. Also, women with a personal or strong history of breast cancer, uterine cancer, unexplained uterine bleeding, history of deep venous thrombosis, or increased history of cardiovascular disease, strokes are not good candidates for hormone replacement therapy. These women are also better served with non-hormone replacement options, which we talk in a separate uh, video. Not all forms of estrogen replacement therapy are the same. The transdermal estrogen preparations have fewer side effects than the oral preparations. Unlike oral estrogen, multiple clinical studies report that transdermal estrogen does not increase the risk of stroke or major cardiovascular disease in healthy women. In contrast, oral estrogen is associated with a small but measurable increase in stroke, thrombosis, and cardiovascular risk. For these reasons, I only prescribe transdermal estrogen for my patients. It is important to realize that about 80% of breast cancers occur after menopause, and 70 to 80% of all breast cancers are estrogen receptor positive, which means that estrogen can stimulate estrogen receptor positive tumors. For these reasons, all women who take hormone replacement therapy should have yearly screening mammograms. For that fact, all women should get screening mammograms regardless because the vast majority of uh, breast cancers occur in women that don't take hormonal replacement therapy. The largest benefit for hormone replacement therapy is the reduction in risk of death from osteoporosis. The overall mortality of osteoporosis fractures is 24% after one year and 62% after five years. The risk of death from osteoporosis fractures after five years is higher than that following myocardial infarctions in five years. In other words, heart attacks have a lower risk of death than osteoporotic fractures. Randomized controlled trials, including the Women's Health Initiative, have shown that hormone replacement therapy significantly reduces the risk of fractures of the spine, the hip, and other bones, typically by 20 to 40%. How does this risk of death from osteoporosis compare to the risk of death from breast cancer? Although 13% of women, or 130 women per thousand, will get breast cancer in their lifetime, only 2.3% of women with breast cancer will die from the disease. That means out of 130 women per thousand who will get breast cancer in their lifetime, three out of these 130 women will die from breast cancer and the other 127 women of the 130 will survive. Combination hormone replacement therapy adds eight new breast cancer cases per uh, thousand women after five years, or 80 breast cancer cases per 10,000 women. This means that 1.8 women out of 10,000 hormone replacement patients in five years will get uh, breast cancer. That means the other 9,998 out of 10,000 women will not die from hormone-related breast cancer, but would benefit from the reduction of mortality of osteoporosis with hormone replacement therapy. In other words, the breast cancer mortality rate of 2.3% for the 13% of women who get breast cancer 
represents a much lower mortality than the 62% overall five-year mortality of osteoporotic fractures. Estrogen replacement therapy not only reduces mortality from osteoporosis, but reduces mortality from severe muscle wasting, also known as sarcopenia. Sarcopenia dramatically increases mortality by increasing falls, fractures, functional decline, and increased hospitalizations, such, as, such that the patients with sarcopenia have a median survival six years shorter than patients without sarcopenia. Interestingly, patients with sarcopenia or severe muscle wasting have a higher likelihood of certain cancers, including breast cancer, lung cancer, colorectal, esophageal cancer, and ovarian cancer. While non-hormonal therapy is available for maintaining bone density in women, such as Prolia, uh, Boniva, Actinel, Fosamax, these are all good medicines that are non-hormonal medicines that are effective for bone density maintenance, there is no adequate substitute for estrogen in maintaining muscle volume and strength. Non-hormonal therapy options are also available for maintaining dermal thickness and reducing wrinkles after menopause, such as the use of tretinoin. However, hormone replacement therapy with estrogen produces stronger collagen synthesis than tretinoin and therefore reduces facial drooping and improves facial tightening and uh, much more so than tretinoin. Basically, tretinoin can be used in all patients, whether they have a history of breast cancer or contraindications for estrogen or hormone replacement therapy or not. But for the majority of women who do not have a history of breast cancer, estrogen replacement therapy in addition to tretinoin gives a better cosmetic result than tretinoin alone. Similarly, hair loss after menopause is common and can be treated with non-hormonal therapies such as uh, minoxidil, spironolactone, and nizoral shampoo, which we recommend in all cases of hair loss regardless of patient history of breast cancer, cardiovascular disease, or stroke. However, adding estrogen to the hair loss regimen is more effective than the non-hormonal therapies alone. And when there are no contraindications to adding estrogen to a woman with hair loss, I also prescribe estrogen in addition to the minoxidil, the spironolactone, and the nizoral shampoo. In a separate YouTube video, I will talk about some of the non-hormonal therapy options available to uh, my high-risk patients, including Avista, Tamoxifen, bisphosphatase, and other medicines. Whether we prescribe hormone replacement therapy or non-hormone replacement therapy, we should not overlook the importance of vitamin D deficiency. The overall prevalence of vitamin D deficiency is 41.6% in adults. Patients with darker skin tone have higher levels of vitamin D deficiency. So about 82% of African Americans have vitamin D deficiency and 69% of Hispanic Americans have vitamin D deficiency. Although it is well known that vitamin D deficiency will cause bone loss, osteoporosis, osteomalacia, vitamin D has effects that go far beyond bone loss. Vitamin D deficiency will cause muscle atrophy, fat degeneration, and will also increase age-related muscle loss. Vitamin D deficient patients are 78% more likely to suffer age-related muscle loss. Some studies report that individuals with vitamin D deficiency are 75% more likely to develop depression compared to those with adequate levels. The winter blues is very common with vitamin D deficiency because during the winter when there's uh, less sunlight, patients uh, produce, the bo our bodies produce less vitamin D and that also increases the level of depression. In summation, vitamin D deficiency and inadequate hormone replacement therapy or non-hormone replacement therapy are two very common causes of tissue wasting which are overlooked. The ideal is to optimize wellness rather than treat disease after it occurs. It is much better to be proactive and treat bone loss, muscle loss, dermal loss in skin, and hair loss before these issues become more advanced and harder to control. We will have additional videos on wellness, anti-aging treatments, stem cell treatments, laser resurfacing, collagen tightening treatments, and J-plasma in other videos. For more information on these topics, call or text the phone number indicated here. Thank you.